Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to explain tanking in Wing 7. The class I'm going to use for this footage is a Heal Alacrity Druid. On Adina and on Sabir I'm using roughly 1400 toughness. On Kadim I'm tanking without any toughness to show you how that can be done even on squishy builds. So without further ado let's get started on Adina. For Adina there's only a few things that matter. Number one is you need to keep the boss turned away from the group at all times. And I'm going to show you that this is pretty simple to do. Simply make it face south, that's the agreed upon direction for tanking in packs generally. But obviously other directions would work as well. So we just keep it facing here and everyone else stands behind. Now tanking is also always about being able to apply boons to your group. And uh, when you look at my spirit timing you will notice that I'm giving alacrity out whenever the group is assembled at the boss and I'm not giving alacrity when the group is spread out. So right now I use two spirits to give alacrity and then I use two spirits again once we group up again. I'm not using my spirits while we're hiding behind the pillar for example. And someone went downstate, I'm going to use my revive glyph. And now actually uh, when the boss phases I'm taking quite some damage because I stood next to the exploding mines. In the next few phases you're going to see me actually sidestep these exploding mines at the end. But you can always remember when you have enough toughness, like with Minstrel Gear, with Giver's Gear, you're generally going to be fine just face tanking the damage from these mines that explode at the end of the phase. But still I'm going to showcase how it's done properly to avoid all damage. What you'll notice here is that I've used my spirits off stack. And they are over here now. I'm going to place them back at the boss as soon as we go again. So, it, cooldown wise, it works because the fight is roughly the cooldown of this. The, the split phase is roughly the cooldown of these spirits. All right, now I can replace the spirits again. I make the boss phase Im here immediately. If someone goes down in the back here, I make sure to not rest them. The rest of the group should rest. I need to point the boss away from the group again. Otherwise, the fight snowballs out of control. And I can provide alacrity. Now one thing you may notice is this cone attack is supposed to knock back. Let's actually show it again. It's supposed to knock you back if you stand in it and you can give yourself stability or a block and most tanks would want to do that um, or you can also dodge backwards. That also works. But most tanks would want to do that but actually on Druid there's a better trick. Uh, if you have your spirit standing in front of you they will actually intercept this attack so this knockback doesn't do anything. I don't have stability, I still get to ignore the cone attack. So yeah, pretty good as Druid, very comfortable. Just make sure you have spirits there and then you're immune to this attack. Then I give alacrity before we go and I give alacrity once we return. That's all right. Okay, and now once the boss approaches 50%, you see me, I actually turn the boss slightly to get away from the mine that's behind me. I'm going to step over here, so the explosion is not going to hit me. It's just something you can do to preserve your life total. Generally, you don't need to, but it's still good to keep in mind. All right, and then for tanking, there's not much more than this actually. In the last phases, the pressure is going to mount slightly. And that's because the Hand of Erosion, which is this one here, it applies a stacking debuff. Here we have two stacks, one from this hand, one from the hand over there. And this stacking debuff just means, well, I take damage over time, which is not avoidable. And the only thing we can do is we can kill these hands faster. We could do a split strategy, but that's not very common in pack groups. Oh yeah, you have, just have to deal with the fact that from now on you're taking much more damage as a tank. And we're still fine in this phase, but the last phase can get a bit spicy. Especially because a hand will spawn here and a hand will spawn here to give more stacks. If you are uncertain about spirit placement, like that it actually cancels the knockback, you can also go into Celestial Avatar and press Celestial Avatar 5, which gives personal stability to avoid the knockback. That's just also an option, like this skill here. Um, but yeah, you can also trust the spirits to tank the attack for you. Other than that, make sure that 
you don't give boons into emptiness, like, this is very important, if I press my spirits right now, they, they would be wasted on this guy who is in my subgroup. Um, he would not get any alec. So yeah. And 25% is approaching. Actually, we have to hide again because we have three dead players by now. But yeah. 25% approaching, I stand away from the mine. Yes, it meant that I turned the boss slightly awkwardly, but it is what it is. It's not going to kill anyone if it's just for two seconds. And yeah. Now, there's one thing that annoys me about the transition. Um, if you look at the layout right now, you see glowing field, glowing rocks and solid rocks. The glowing rocks are going to change, or they're going to disappear, they're going to respawn, whatever. And the solid rocks just stay. So what you have to make sure, especially in challenge mode where dropping into the sand just kills you, you have to make sure that you are on a solid rock. And right now, obviously I could go over there, but I don't need to. I can just chill here. Like this is super, super safe, easy. And wait until everything has respawned and then get into position. Like there's no reason to risk anything here. And I see so many players, not just tanks, but generally players, just die in this transition phase for no reason whatsoever. Just play it safe. You can stand in safe positions, no need to risk. And yeah, that's about it. We go into the final phase and now you see that the pressure starts mounting. We have three stacks right now. And once this hand spawns here, we get a fourth stack and then a fifth stack because we're not killing it. And if you're concerned about hand damage, you can obviously make your DPS players clear this hand, but it's still, it's still, that this reduces the damage, it's very effective to do that. But um, the other solution is just to run two healers, which we have, and which most pack groups have, and take enough toughness and vitality as a tank. And obviously on a class that has more blocks, or you could block some of these auto hits so we take less damage, we could dodge roll a few of them as well, just make sure to not dodge into the sand and to not turn the boss too much. But yeah, I face tank it here and it's still fine because as I said, we have two healers. And even though my health drops sometimes, I'm fine. And, it, and again, the knockback is cancelled by my spirits. Alright, and that's about it for Adina. I think Adina is not very difficult. If I had to summarize the key point, it's not getting knocked into mines. And the other thing is not getting hit by the ex not getting killed by the explosion of the mines. And then it's just about making sure the boss is never facing the group. If someone goes downstate, you can't be the person who is resing because that would just further cleave everyone. So you keep the boss turned away. And that's it, yeah. One thing to notice is that with one broken pillar up, the boss has 20% more damage, so it really starts hurting. Right now we have so many stacks of the debuff and everything is hurting. So I'm very glad that we had enough damage. Now for Sabir, um, it's toughness based tanking, um, but the tanking strat is to just um, keep the boss face towards the group. And the important thing here is even though like you don't need a dedicated tank, like it, anyone here could tank, you still want like one player to be designated towards it because if you have every if everyone has 1,000 toughness only, then the tanking will just be random and in particular the person who enters the platform first will, will get the tank. And some DPS classes would still like to personally be flanking, like they want to stand somewhere to the side of the boss to be able to, to flank properly once they have the action key. And they would stand in front of the boss to get hit a few times which gives them the action key and then move to the flank. And if they randomly become the tank, they can't do that anymore because the, the boss will just turn towards them. So I would still say on Sabir, run toughness. I run 1400, as I've said. And, but you don't have anything particular to do. A few things maybe what you can do are you can focus on doing as much crowd control as possible. You run a paralyzation sigil in your weapon to buff the CC you're 
special action key is doing. And you can also make sure to give healings and never get knocked into the white tornadoes because that's just a huge time waste to be knocked there. And you see me even use the special action key to skip the shockwave when I have it. And one thing maybe that's interesting about Druid here is actually how the revive debuff in the Tabir challenge mode works. It reduces the revive speed. And the thing is, if I use my nature spirit on downstate players, they might not actually be revived by the nature spirit. So nature spirit on this fight can be kind of awkward in challenge mode because it doesn't fully revive sometimes. But here's the funny thing. Reviving actually is affected by outgoing healing modifiers. So when you have um, like your enhancement, utility enhancement and you have monk rune, etc. And you have traits, you gain actually a lot of outgoing healing. And reviving speed is affected by that. And the reviving ability from the Glyph of the Stars is affected by that. So Glyph of the Stars is still a very good revive skill. Unlike the Nature Spirit, which doesn't get the bonus from, from Revive, as far as I know. So, with Glyphs of the Stars, we can actually rest people at range still. So yeah, that's pretty cool, and that's why I like it on this fight in particular. Um, anything else to say here is that in the final phase, it's good to chase the big tornado and not be chased by it. So what I mean is we're standing here, and as soon as we can, we move over there, rather than being on the opposite side and always being forced to run from it. This makes it way more chill and it gives you the freedom to, to move to the next sector whenever you want in a way that you don't touch the white tornadoes either because those would kill your special action key. And if you're on the run, you just have to move and that's, that's kind of worse. And when you use the action key to CC, make sure to not get pushed in the big tornado, but that's not something tanking specific. Um, just something very important to keep in mind. And by the way, in the break bar meter, you can see like how far I can pull ahead with my paralyzation sigil and also with one of the traits that Druid has in the marksmanship trait line, which boosts our crack control. So yeah, I'm doing way more crack control than most people here. And we go into the corner. One thing about going into co the corner maybe is if you get immobilized and can't run anymore, you can just use the action key to blink there. Like, there's no there's no need to get stuck um, and die. You can always just action key into the corner. But yeah, that's it. The beer is really free for tanks. I don't think I'm explaining anything extraordinary here. But yeah. Okay, now we have spent a little time on these first two bosses. And now we're actually going to take some more time to study the final boss because on Katim the Peerless there's actually more going on, there's more to it than just um, on Adina where you face in one direction, there you actually have to think about a few things. The first thing you should do is you should activate your special action key, I actually forgot about it here and I noticed it very quickly. The next thing is, and this is important, as a tank your job is not just to tank the boss because you have other jobs as well. You are a healer, you also are a boon support. As a boon support, you want to give boons. And as a druid, that means I need to place my spirits on top of the group. As a general idea is, I'm abusing the idle time of the boss where he doesn't do anything and where I don't need to be tanking. I'm using these idle times to provide boons to my group. I stand on them during the idle time. You can see it here. I walk in to give boons. And that's it, they have alacrity now. And this is something very important to learn. What times is this boss not attacking you? And this is something that comes with experience. I can show you how it works for this fight, but depending on group DPS, the idle times are going to be different. So, so yeah, I notice I need to activate my action key. And let's talk about tanking. Now you see the barrage it, it does a lot of damage, it applies vulnerability. The key thing you want to do is you want to cleanse this vulnerability because otherwise the next attack will do much more damage to you. And other than that, other than cleansing, you want to dodge roll 
We want to dodge roll backwards and forwards to not just spread it wildly. And that way you can survive even on squishy gear. As I've said, I have 1000 toughness on this build and I still survive just fine. Now, you see my road placement there? I placed the cone and the road sub subsequently in this, in this part of the circle because my kiter in the north is actually standing over there because he has to catch the ball over there. So this, this, um, this placement doesn't disturb anyone. It's also not where the ball is landing, which is very good for, for, this, um, for this guy on, on this pylon over there. And he's also not affected because he, he is one, quad, one of these sections away. He's on this pizza, pizza slice, basically. So after this first road, there's a second road and I do the same thing again here. And again, now I'm tanking in a way that this guy is still not disturbed because he's over there. And also this guy, which you can't see right now, he's, he would be annoyed if I tanked it here. But by tanking it here, it, doesn't, it really doesn't affect anyone negatively. I dodge roll. It's, it's coming, the attack is coming three times, then a road. So you have, a, you have two dodges, use them and use contact lenses to ma make sure vulnerability doesn't accumulate. Then it's very safe to tank, even without any blocks. Now, after these two attacks, there are two options what's going to happen next. Option number one is if your DPS is very bad, the boss just continues to do another road. If this happens, I would probably go over here, up there, place the third road. Now this annoys this player over here because he's in that section of the circle, but he can step over there and he doesn't have to collect the ball anymore because his ball was the first. So if there's a third barrage attack, we would stand over there. Due to power creep, most of the times, especially in group groups, by this time, um, the boss actually does only two roads and now comes a lightning attack. And in challenge mode, lightning is very dangerous because if you get hit by it, you leave a fire trail on the floor and this can kill entire groups. So what I'm doing as a tank is I'm providing ages at that point. I use my white tiger to provide ages to my group, so the first, that they are free to mess up the first one and then they have to carry out for the second. Oh yeah, that's just one tiny thing to recognize. So in summary, first phase will be two roads and then one lightning attack. Groups with good DPS will not see the lightning attack at all. And then we CC pylon and get back to the boss. Again, I use the idle time to provide the boons. And now one. And now I take a lot of damage. So I condi cleanse with my healing spring. And then I dodge the other barrages to maintain myself at good health. Now I make a mistake. I'm, I thought we had good DPS. With good DPS, um, at this point, he would go to CC a pylon. So if he's at like 70% right now, he will just try to CC a pylon. But actually, um, he's going for another barrage on me and I notice it way too late. Um, so I think I'm going to CC this anomaly right now. Actually, I CC the anomaly too soon as well. I CC it outside the fire field, which is very bad. But yeah, the barrage was messed up. I noticed the mistake. I placed the road here in the correct spot. And then I go to the group. Now his sequencing is going to be a CC bar on a pylon. So we have to CC the boss. And after that, um, he phases. If he doesn't phase by that time, he would go for another lightning attack. All right, then we CC again. And now the tanking restarts. And this time I position myself again for the first barrage. Giving boons before. But actually he decides to go for a shark attack. So right now I have really nothing to do. I stand here once he's finished, so I'm ready. Actually, my group is standing on top of me. They shouldn't be there. They should be on the opposite side over there. But whatever. So yeah, I'm tanking towards the side again. Because the road here really doesn't, doesn't hurt anyone. Dodging backwards to maintain health and cleansing Vuln to maintain health as well. And now he's doing another DC bar. And as you can see, in this whole section from 60 to 40%, actually he didn't get to attack more than once. 
Like, there's nothing that's threatening you as a tank. So, a lot of players will say you need 2000 toughness and they will take a lot of damage. And the reason they need that is that they're not cleansing vulnerability properly, they're not evading the attacks properly, which takes them makes them take a lot of optional damage. And if you just avoid the damage, you notice you'll ha just have to dodge one attack and then you, you're good again, right? Because the boss is basically going from animation lock to animation lock. Everything will stop his attack pattern. But yeah, I'm positioning myself correctly. I send my gazelle to the sea and tropic distortions sometimes, but I have also other players who help me. One thing you want to avoid as a tank is these yellow circles. They hurt a lot, like they do 7k damage or so if you stand in them. Um, just sidestep them. There's no reason to take this unnecessary damage. Unless, of course, here we had to stand in it. But yeah, preserve your life total a bit by, by sidestepping some stuff. So you can more easily face tank the rest. Alright, I send my gazelle over there. There's one trick you can use for the gazelle. You can, if you have it on passive um, and it hasn't attacked in a while due to that, first attack it's going to do after you press F1 is actually a CC. So you can combo the auto attack and follow it up with a F2, which is also a CC, which instantly breaks the whole anomaly. It takes, it does 400 break per damage, so... That's what he can do. And this allows you, even as a heal alak, druid tank, you can actually just CC all the anomalies on your own. But it would still be nice like if other players also keep an eye on anomalies, because sometimes you're busy doing healing and stuff. This guy down to the shark, I can't do anything to help him. But luckily he was revived in time. Now I take a lot of damage. I have 12 vuln. The attack hurt, and the next one is going to hurt even more. So what I'm doing here is I'm using Healing Spring to heal myself back up, and cleanse the vulnerability, and then evade backwards. To avoid some more damage. I did a very bad job at evading, but okay. Again, there was only one barrage my going my way, and the boss has faced again. Really, if you have good DPS, this fight is a lot more comfortable to tank because relatively speaking the mechanics take up more of the phase compared to auto attacks. When going back in you need to be the first one but I still have the action key and no one else had it so I still got aggro which is very good. And in this phase again he goes for lightning that means I don't have anything to do I can give boons to my allies and now I tank towards this direction again very comfy here. Evade two times, make sure to cleanse condis in between so you don't have fallen. And that's already it. He's doing another lightning attack. And then he's going to follow up with another barrage. And now I have a little um, quiz for you. He's doing this road. And I have two options now. I can go over here, or can, I can go over there. And where should I go? There's only one correct answer. And you also see it, kind of. I'm going to move over here. Why? Well, the answer is shown just a few seconds after. Actually, there was still a road here. It just disappeared. It was a graphical bug, but it's still there. And if you step on it, you can't see it, but it's going to kill you. And this is the one thing that makes tanking in this last phase, and also in all of the other phase before, but especially in this last phase where so much pressure is potentially there, um, it makes it very dangerous to tank because these invisible, invisible roads can just kill you by surprise. So the main strategy to deal with them is to remember where you stood earlier. I remembered that I that I stood on this side before. Which is also like it's the side I've started on on in phase one. So I of course I remember that I was there. Um I always start there. So I know not to go there anymore in the final phase. 
and I don't get hit by this hidden road. And now it's visible again because it despawns. But yeah, until ArenaNet fixes it, make sure to never step into invisible roads. Remember where you've been 20 seconds earlier and then you're going to be fine as well. Alright, and then he does another shark attack, but I think he doesn't even have time for, for it. No. Okay, that's it. Um, as you can see, in this boss fight, what's very important is placing the roads in good positions, not placing them on top of pylon players, not placing it on top of the pylon, not where they collect the balls, but rather just use the floor pattern to discern where are uh, the good spots to place them. And then remember that there are always three attacks in a barrage and then follow up by a road. And you can just dodge two of these the barrages and handle the third one by out healing it. Or if you are a class with a block, you can block the third part of the barrage. Make sure that you're giving boons to your group in the in the middle while while the fight is going on, like that you're that you're walking on top of your group, you give some boons sometimes, very good. And if you're doing that stuff, you're probably doing fine as a tank. I I mean, CCing the boss and CCing the the anomalies is pretty much optional, as long as you're tanking away from a group and so on. I think you're doing already a very good job. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found these insights actually helpful and I see you the next time.